All right. And with that, my friends, we are live. Yeah. Feral Swim Tag back in the saddle. What is up, Team Zood? How are we doing? I need to hit that button so we can get my filter here. And we're going to put it right there. And we are all ready to go. All right. So um, we're going we're gonna to wait a few minutes to uh, roll to get started here. So for those of you that are tuning in, remember, this is a live broadcast. If you are wanting to hop in and ask any questions whatsoever, hit me up in the chat. We are going to be reviewing the Zoot Ultra Buoyancy Short today. Um, we are, I'm going to give my thoughts on this and kind of talk about buoyancy shorts in general, do's and don'ts, why's and why nots, all that fun stuff. Um, and then I'm going to talk about sprinting because um, I just did, yeah, I guess you would say, my current PR um, of a uh, 51.6 for 100 free. Um, I think I went maybe a 51.4, but maybe a 51.8. I don't remember that much off the top of my head. Um, but I've gone a 46 before, so. That was back in my college days, which those days don't come back very easily. No. <laughs> uh, by the way, hydrating with uh, Noon tonight. Uh, good old uh, uh, mem proud member of Teen Noon. Um, they, uh, they are not a, uh, a partner with Zoot, unfortunately. Maybe soon? I don't, I don't know what they do for that. Um... But yes, as always, uh, if you have any questions whatsoever, uh, post them in chat. Uh, if you're watching this as a VOD, you are more than welcome to comment at any point. Um, I do check on these VODs to make sure that any comments are being handled. Um, so please do not be afraid. You got any questions to ask, I am here to ask, answer them. Uh, so uh, for those of you that are new to this stream, my name is John Farrell. I am the officially, unofficially official uh, stroke technique uh, guidance counselor or coach of Team Zoot. Um, basically, I asked very nicely if I could talk about swimming a lot on the uh, Facebook channel, and they said yes. So uh, that's why I self-glossed myself as the officially, unofficially official uh, stroke technique coach of Team Zoot. Um, I am the proprietor of Feral Swim Tech, which is a recently launched endeavor of mine. Um, I've been doing stroke technique uh, coaching for over 12 years now. Um, I'm trying to kind of expand it on the internet. So you see right below me, we got the uh, email, the Instagram, and the YouTube. And I am in negotiations with myself to get on the tick a talks yeah, that's a that's a scary proposition. I don't know if I want to. I, I don't know if I want to swim in those waters. Uh, those those waters are like the California oceans after the first big storm of the year. Yeah, let's just say I went surfing once um, after a major storm. That was an experience. I'll tell you what. I'm grateful that I got that stank out of my wetsuit, and I didn't grow a third arm. Uh, <laughs> all right so with those jokes and yuck yucks out of the way um let's uh oh oh by the way one more thing before we before we get started yes i am still doing uh swim technique reviews um if you would like a swim technique review please hit me up in the email uh that way um we can talk i can tell you what you need in order for me to review your stroke um i have done two in the past week um and they were very happy with the reviews that i've done and I'm very excited to uh, continue to help anyone and everyone. This is a free service, uh, more of a pay what you want kind of a thing. Um, if you can pay a lot, pay a lot. If you can pay a little, pay a little. If you can't pay anything, hey, just tell me how you liked it, and that's good enough for me. But uh, let's get on with the main show tonight. Uh, we are going to review these bad boys, the Zoot Ultra Buoyancy Short. Now, um, buoyancy shorts for me are kind of a new concept, um, I would have never, ever considered purchasing these back in my uh, college swim days. Uh, we, we totally went the other way. We went the way of the drag suit, where we wanted to find the biggest, gnarliest, draggiest suit we can possibly get with, with pockets sewn into it, with 
plastic hoops holding the pockets open so they create these little parachutes right around your butt to slow you down. So you have to dig way harder in order to make the sets. Yeah, the idea of buying shorts that brought our butt up and made swimming easier, that, that never occurred to us. So for me personally, I would say for me, I wouldn't buy this. But... Hey, Janet, what's up? How you doing? Welcome to the stream. But now that I've worn these and full disclosure, Zoot did send me a pair for free to review. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Mark. You're awesome. By the way, um, tomorrow we got the Team Zoot check-in. If anyone could tell Mark, hey, I really like John Farrell's swim tech thing. <laughs> That'd be great. Anyway, um, so I've worn these. I've worn these for one workout. Um, well, technically I wore them for two swim lessons and then a 30 minute workout. Um, and, um, I, I gotta say, I kind of like them. I kind of like them. Um, I, I will admit though, it is very strange. Um, because here in California, pretty much all pools are outdoors. Um, so I swim at my local high school and it's like, you know, 60 degrees and you get out and you're kind of cold and then you get this like hot, hot water trickling down your leg and you're just like, oh, like I didn't pee my suit, I swear. It's just hot in there. So basically what are buoyancy shorts? Let's first talk about that. These are basically, this is a wetsuit. This is a wetsuit that is the size of a male jammer length suit, okay? So if I stand up and I put these up to me, these are going just about above my knee, okay? Uh, discount code for Gatorade does not work. Also, when will we receive our orders? I'm not the guy to ask that question. Um, <laughs> okay, so full disclosure, I am not employed by Zoot. Zoot does not pay me money to do this. Um, they give me free stuff every once in a while as a thank you. Um, but I, I live about an hour and a half ish north of the Zoot main offices down in Carlsbad, California. Um, I am not tied into any of that whatsoever. So I'm sorry, Jean-Luc. Um, I, I can't answer that question. Honestly, I've had issues with the Gatorade code myself. So I kind of live in like, me. I'm with noon anyway. So <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, also, when will we receive our orders? Um, last year, um, the orders came in kind of mid February ish, or it's like March. It was like it was like middle ish of March. I'm really hoping they come before March 12th because that is the Pasadena Reverse, which is my next race, uh, which is what I'm doing. Um, so, uh, but yes, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not plugged in that way. Um, you, you're going to want to uh, ask that question to Mark tomorrow. He will be live on this channel. Two o'clock, uh, two o'clock Pacific time, uh, is when they start here. Uh, so that's definitely a question for Mark Goddard. Um, but, uh, so back to the suit. So the suit actually fits pretty nicely here. Let me, um, let me pop on the, uh, let me pop on. You're going to see your your lovely chat over here. Um, I'm going to pop onto my Instagram. I'll show off a couple pictures of yours truly uh, rocking the uh, rocking the uh, the suit itself. Oh, wow, that stinks. Why why can't I see it? Oh, dang it! I hate doing this. Um, well, I can type. So, all right, let's see here. There, there. So, all right. So, this is me on the pool deck uh, in all my glory, uh, rocking the uh, rocking the suit. So, as you can tell, it kind of goes right down to to just about the knee. You know, fits at the waist. Don't disregard that. That doesn't exist. I I haven't done the airbrushing yet. Excuse me. I'm sorry. So, this is this is kind of what it looks like when you're on the blocks, ready to go. Um, so basically how does it feel like when you're in the water wearing these things? Um, it, it basically feels like you kind of have a mini wetsuit on. Um, I can feel the buoyancy. Um, I can feel the buoyancy with this kind of helping me stay on top of the water. Um, but I will openly admit, um, with how long I've been swimming, 
my body basically stays on top of the water anyway. Um, so realistically, what this does is this helps kind of alleviate some of the pressure. It kind of makes me feel lighter. It, it, it's basically like what would happen if you're running down the street and you tied like 10 helium balloons to your shoulders. So, so you're kind of, you're kind of feel a little bit, you know, you feel like you weigh just a little bit less. That That's how it feels like for me. Um, but like I said before, I was an All-American swimmer. I swam distance for Brigham Young University. My best 500 time is a 436. So, so for me, it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard for me to review that aspect of the buoyancy short um, just because of the way my body positioning is. It, it doesn't really affect me much, but what it does is it kind of it kind of alleviates some of the strain. It, it it makes it just a little bit easier for me. So um, this is made out of uh, basically the same stuff they make the wetsuits out of. Um, this is uh, the Yamamoto uh, with the aerodome. The aerodome are the panels right here on the front of the leg. So when you're kicking like this. The aerodome is on the bottom, so that's going to help push you up even more. Um, this has the Aqualift technology in it, which basically is they've engineered the panels to help uh, distribute the more buoyant portions of the neoprene, so that helps push you up more towards the surface. Um, I, I will openly admit, these are the first pair of buoyancy sh shorts I've ever owned, so I can't say, oh, well, you know, this compares to this other short. I just... I just don't really have any other shorts. Um, I don't have anything else to compare this to. Um, so overall, what are my thoughts on buoyancy shorts? I like them. I I would not wear them very often personally um, in terms of everyday pool workouts. Now, where I would wear these is I actually have a business trip coming up where I'm going over to Hawaii. I'm packing these bad boys and I'm going open water swimming with them. Um, so uh, so this would be great for kind of more warm water, open water swim stuffs where, you know, you don't really want to rock a full sleeveless because the water temperatures are actually pretty hot. Um, like for me personally, I'm going to take these to Lake Powell every year. Um, we go, my family goes to Lake Powell for 10 days every year and that water is warm. It is very warm at the surface. I tried, uh, swimming with a sleeveless wetsuit and it actually gets pretty hot. So wearing something like this gives me a little bit more buoyancy, a little more security when I'm out swimming in open water. Um, the, really the open water in warm places is where I would wear these personally. Now, what are uses for buoyancy shorts, okay? You got a couple uses. Number one, just like I said, you want a little extra security when you're out swimming in open water conditions. Don't want to rock a wetsuit, but you just want something. Buoyancy shorts will totally do that for you. Number two, you want to do a, you want to use it in a pool and you're doing a true, uh, just kind of a, relaxing recovery swim workout. Now, recovery swim workouts are probably going to be one of the best ones to get a lot of lactic acid out of your system just because you're moving your entire body. You're using all the muscles that you would in running and cycling and just the full body really just flushes everything through your system. Like personally, I can feel a major difference because I typically lift on Friday afternoons. I can feel a huge difference on Saturday mornings when I swim at night on Fridays after I lift. So I go lift, do a sw do a 30 minute swim lesson, then an hour swim practice. Sometimes on Friday, my schedule, I just can't do the lesson and I, ca I can get the lift in, but I can't get the swim in. Huge difference in that. So try, try and make your recovery wor workout swim workouts. And wearing these bad boys, these will definitely help alleviate that pressure so you can keep moving. You can move the legs, move the arms, flush all that crap out of your system and have the extra buoyancy of the, of the shorts. Totally cool. All right, next. If you want to kind of break your distance barrier, like for instance, you got an hour. 
you can only fit in a single hour workout in terms of you get to the pool, you get all ready, you hop in the water, you got one hour in the water, then you got to bail, get your dry stuff on and get out of there, okay? Rock and the buoyancy shorts would definitely help you kind of ease the burden of drag so then you can go longer, okay? And this is basically a pure, I want to swim farther, but I can't really go faster. I, I can't make myself go faster, okay? Good idea. Now the one way to wear, one reason to wear them that I find a little bit dicey is fixing body position. Now, some of you may be thinking, well, Farrell, I mean, you, you just talked about swimming more distance. And if you're swimming more distance and wearing the buoyancy shorts, you're going to swim farther because your body positioning is better. It, it, it's all about the reasoning. It's all about why am I wearing these shorts? Now, there's a difference between fixing technique and going a farther distance. If you're trying to go a farther distance, you're just going to do what you got to do. Like, for instance, if I'm on the bike and I'm really trying to kind of push my distance, I'm actually more going for time. You know, I want to try and be in the saddle for an hour. I want to be on my butt on the saddle for an hour so I can get used to sitting on a saddle for an hour. Okay? I don't know if that's a really great idea, a great concept, but what do I know? I'm, I'm not a cyclist. <laughs> so... Anyway, so if you want to use these shorts to kind of break some sort of a distance barrier, okay. If you're using this short to say, I'm going to fix my body positioning by wearing a cheat short, please don't do that. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you no. I'm not going to tell you you're a terrible person. I'm just going to ask you to reevaluate your life's decisions. Because <laughs> here's the deal. Here's the deal. If you wear the buoyancy short in order to compensate for bad body positioning, you're introducing a huge crutch. Because if you wear the buoyancy short and you don't fix the back flexion problem, you don't fix the leg problem, if you don't fix the problem that's really associated with your bad body positioning, you're not really fixing it. You're, you're just kind of putting a little Band-Aid on it. You're like, okay, well, now I've fixed it because I wear these floaty shorts that keep my butt near the surface, especially if you weigh like a buck 30 sopping wet. Dude, these are going to float you like nobody's business. Currently, I weigh about 200, and I it, it, it helps, but it's not like, whoop, <laughs> you know, it, it it doesn't, it doesn't, it, it does enough to be noticed, but not enough to where I'm like, I can't get myself underwater, okay? So, especially when you're lighter, these shorts are going to do a lot more for you. So, if you're a female and you're like my wife and weighs a buck 30 sopping wet, it's gonna, it's just going to pop you right up to the surface. So, you're going to be thinking, ah, my, my troubles are over. I can swim at the surface with the floaty pants. Yeah, no, you still have your problems. Yeah, no, you still haven't fixed them. You've just figured a way to make yourself feel better about yourself. I, I, I just can't recommend it for that. Now, the other, the other methods, making uh, recovery workouts easier, going further, um, you know, trying to break distance barriers, um, and uh, wearing it in op in warm, open water conditions where you're worried if you are in wetsuit, you're going to overheat. Th those are good ideas. Now, are they great for sprints? Not exactly. <laughs> so what I want to share is I want to share uh, my Instagram post where I actually, um, I actually swam, sprinted, a 100 freestyle wearing the buoyancy short. Um, so um, basically in this, I'm saying, um, actually, you know what? We'll just. So uh, right now I have about 800 yards for. A so this is nice me. I make sure before I do these, I always say how far, how much of a workout I've done beforehand. All right. We'll see. If, we'll see how. Well so uh, this is this is actually my uh, my high school swim coach. Take your mark. Um, my high school swim Go. coach who was filming me and timing me at the same time. Um, 
she's a sweetheart. She she's been she's been one of my best friends for a very long time. Um, but yeah, so um, so I, I'm also showing this so we can kind of move into the uh, the next uh, the next portion of the stream time. We're going to talk about spring. Um, so a couple of things I really want you to watch here: watch the rate of kick, watch this turnover speed, and just kind of watch the difference between a turnover of a distance and a sprint. Now, full disclosure, I was not a sprinter. Um, I was not fast enough to be a sprint, but I can still go a 51. 47, 48, 49, <laughs> So I may 50, not be a sprinter, 51. but I know how to swim pretty fast. So then, um, so yeah, so that is the, um, so that, that's my little, that's my little sprint montage. Uh, so overall, buoyancy short, uh, they run about 130-ish. Uh, Team Zoot gets a nice hefty discount with Zoot. Um, so if you would like to buy these, uh, go right on ahead. I won't stop you. Um, just know what you're buying them for and use them effectively, okay? Don't, don't let these turn into a crutch. Um, I totally, I totally approve of these. This is a good product. Um, my, my only drawback are the drawstrings. I'm I'm in heavy negotiations with Mark. I am petitioning them very hard to give us another like two inches on the drawstrings, cause like, cause I'm not that big of a feller, but I'm just kind of like, <laughs> in order to tie my drawstrings on these zoot suits, man. It's just like, come on, give me like another inch or two, please. So I've been uh, I've been petitioning Mark and the uh, the development team to give us just a couple more inches on those drawstrings. It's like, dude, we tuck them in, man. And like, okay, I have to say, I'm, I love Mark, but I don't understand this. He's just like, oh well, I wear a large and I just put the suit on and hop right in. I'm like, dude, how is it not just? You know, just like falling off you when you push off. I mean, I tell you what, man. If I did not tie my suit, if I pushed off, um, I I'm going to jail for indecent exposure. <laughs> the thought of someone putting on a speedo brief or a jammer length and not actually tying the drawstring—it's like, what? Why? No, don't do that. Okay, so enough about that. Uh, Zoot buoyancy short, good, great, recommend it. Um, um, I'll put a link in the description after the video. Um, so let's now talk about sprinting. Okay. Sprinting is something most triathletes are like, do I really need to learn this? It's like underwater. It's like underwater streamlines and underwater dolphin kicks. Yes. You want to learn how to do a decent sprint. Okay. This is the same concept as doing VO2 max on the bike. It's the same concept of going to the track and doing 440 sprints, okay? You got to learn how to do a decent 100 freestyle sprint, okay? You got to learn how to do it either off the blocks or push off the wall, okay? Diving off the blocks, that's a completely different animal. I actually would want to film that, pre-film that portion at a pool so I can actually talk about the whole dynamics and stuff behind an actual block start, um, doing a block start will probably take off some, if you do a decent, uh, pool start, that'll probably take off at least a second, um, on your, uh, hundred freestyle, just because you're going to get so much more speed off that first one. It's going to really bring down that first 25 time. Um, but, uh, but basically what, what, what we need to do is we need to move away from this concept that, in order to sprint 100 freestyle, I just have to move my arms faster and I have to move my legs faster. That's not really going to cut it. Because here's why. Sprint stroke is a completely different animal than distance stroke. Just like sprint running is a, com is a completely different animal than distance running. Different mechanics, different ideas, different methodologies. It, it, it's a completely different mindset, okay? Okay. The main difference between sprint stroke and distance stroke is where does the rotation begin, okay? Think of it this way. When we're doing distance, we want to have, and by the way, if you have any questions about this whatsoever, please hit me up in chat. 
um, because I know a lot of people really, really struggle with learning how to bring their 100 freestyle time down. Um, you know, something that I'm actually in the works with is I'm trying to uh, get Lionel Sanders as a client of sorts to do a swim technique review and help him get his 100 freestyle down under a minute. Uh, currently, his record, and it, this is public record, it's on, it's on his YouTube, go check Duel in the Desert, his current best is about a 101. I beat him by about 10 seconds, and he's one of the best triathletes in the world. So, <laughs> so it's like sloppy me can go a 51, one of the fittest dudes in the world, he should be able to go at least a 55. Why doesn't he go a 55? It's all because of technique. He doesn't understand proper sprint technique. So let's talk about this, okay? The number one difference is going to be how you initiate your body rotation, okay? When we are doing distance, we like to reach and extend. You know, we like to extend through the arm. We're going to extend through those hips. We're going to open those hips. We're going to grab that hand. We're going to push it down and roll all the way on to the other side. We don't really want to do this during sprints because here's why. Number one, too slow. Way too slow. You are not going to get the arms moving fast enough in order to make a sprint happen. You're just not. If you if if I were to do my distance stroke fast, I probably could get under a minute. I could probably do a sub minute if I did my distance stroke fast. I actually need to time that. I got to check that out. I got to see if I can do that. But anyway, so the main difference is instead of reaching, we want to punch. Okay? You have to pretend that you're like a boxer and you go punch, 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 punch. Okay, you're not you're not swimming like this, no. But it's punch, 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 punch. All right. So, rule number one: shoulder driven as opposed to hip driven rotation. Okay, it's not a lengthening; it's a punch. All right. So, what I like to do is I like to do uh, something like this with all of my sprinters that I work with at the high school level. Okay. So. I'm gonna get this microphone nice and far away from me and I'm gonna, I'm gonna say things a little bit louder. So, okay. So what I like to do is get, get here, kind of get in front of a mirror and you're gonna bring your arm up and forward, okay? And boom, okay? So somewhere around here, and boom, 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 That's how you start learning how to sprint. You feel silly. You feel like, hey, man, I'm a, I'm a boxer, man. I'm a bo That's the idea. The idea is you're going to punch forward, grab that hand, and boom, and retract as fast as you can. So here is is the dry land version of kind of the steps because because when I teach pulling, I teach it in steps, okay? So step one, step two, step three, okay? For sprint, one. One, okay, that, that's one. One is bam. You gotta get that arm from, from behind to forward and bam. One, 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 okay. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, okay. So you're gonna be here, boom, 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 one, two. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, you see how I go forward and snap that hand down. Snap, pull, snap, pull, okay? So you're going to be doing the stronger motion here because that's your drive forward. This gets you here as like a rubber band. So you're gonna punch here, bam, all right? You see that shoulder rotation? Boom, 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 all right? That's how you sprint pull. That's it. Because you're here, boom, boom, boom. Okay? And then it's just boom, 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 boom. All right? Very fast, very fast. So let me slow it down. Let me slow it down. So you're here, punch, grab, pull back, punch, 
grab, pull back, punch. Grab, pull back, punch. All right, so that's the drill you want to do. So with the left hand, punch, grab, pull back, punch, grab. So when you're grabbing, you see my hand is constantly here. We're gonna grab, see my hand is still nice and flat. Push back, punch, grab, push back, punch, grab, push back, punch. All right, so what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna get your fins for these ones, okay? Normally, I don't recommend using fins for something, but with learning dis learning sprint, you're gonna want fins. Because what you're really gonna want to learn how to do is you're gonna wanna learn how to move these arms beyond ridiculously fast, okay? So, the reason why I bring out the concept of beyond ridiculous is because our heads have limiters, okay? Our heads have limiters. Our heads are the ones that tell us you're kind of going into stupid territory, okay? Every, and this is something that we as distance athletes are continuously trying to overcome. Our brains tell us, you're gonna run a half a marathon? You're gonna go a full marathon? How stupid are you? That's ridiculous. Why on earth would you do that? No, seriously, why would you put me, your body that you're supposed to love through all this pain and torture? Not only in the race, all the training runs, the months of running. And then you're gonna do that with the bike? And then you're gonna do that with swimming? You're gonna swim a 4,000? Who swims a 4,000? Those people are nuts. They're crazy. So, our brains have that little voice that tells us we're stupid. Us as triathletes, we usually tell that thing, that voice, shut up. <laughs> I saw that on a funny YouTube thing and I giggled. Um, so basically what we have to do when we start really learning how to sprint is we got to learn to move our bodies way faster than what our minds think is good. Okay. When I talk about learning how to swim faster, kind of in a more gradual sense, you know, trying to, to better your average pace from a 150. Dude, my thoughts exactly about running. Yeah. Same thing with me. That's why I only do sprints and Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> I've done I've done two half Ironmans and I'm just like I can't run that far right now. <laughs> I can't train for that distance. I just have I don't have enough time to do that. Anyway, Samuel, what's up, dude? Welcome to the stream. So basically, when we're when we're learning how to swim faster, you know, we want to kind of figure out where that thrash point is because there's a point with how fast you're moving your arms that you're really not moving anything. Okay, you're not moving anything because you've hit what I call the thrash point where your hands just simply aren't really grabbing anything on the water and you're just spinning your arms and you're doing nothing. Sprinting is basically pushing beyond that thrash point, but you're supplying so much more power that that thrash point actually goes up. Okay. The, 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 there, there is an absolute correlation between speed of stroke and power, the amount of power you put into the stroke. Just remember, overall basic, basic kinesiology concepts here. You output a lot of power, you gain a lot of speed, but you can only go a short distance. That's why sprinters, that's why sprinters exist. You output a moderate amount of power over a moderate speed, you're able to go a much longer distance, okay? So what we're trying to do here is we are trying to figure out what power can, what is the maximum power we can output for basically, for me, how much power can I output for about 50 seconds before my body turns to spaghetti? In that 100 freestyle of that 51.6, my arms were spaghetti by the end of it. Back in college, a 51 is what I'm repping for rounds of 5100s, okay? <laughs> 5100s on the minutes, I'm going about 51, 52. Uh, do I suggest swimming with paddles? Not for sprinting, not for sprinting. Um, reason why is the paddle, 
um, increases the surface area of your hand, um, you will swim. Your your stroke rate will become much slower because you're required to output a lot more force in order to move at the same speed. So it's not a bad idea to incorporate some faster paddle work. But if you're trying to like sprint your best time, paddles paddles aren't going to take you to the promised land. And the other major, major caveat here is you need to gradually increase the amount of power with paddles because it puts a lot more strain on your shoulders. If I'm not careful and I try and go too hard with my big honking boy paddles, I'm going to feel it the next day. If you've had shoulder issues, you're not going to really have a good time. So with paddles, I would say they are a great tool for learning how to push with more power, but you wind up creating more strain on your shoulders that aren't, that don't really exist if you're using your actual hands. Okay. So just be careful with the paddles. Always it, it when in doubt, go slower, learn to learn to build and gradually add more paddle work into your workouts. Cause I actually developed bicep tendonitis in my right shoulder in college after doing a massive bicep curl set and then going and going all out backstroke paddles. And it just, it, it didn't, it didn't like destroy my career, but it was a major, major annoyance. Um, so anyway, so, so back to the idea of power. Okay. So, what you're going to want to do is you're actually going to want to put your fins on. You're going to want to put your fins on. Fins are going to be your best friend for really learning how to sprint. Because here's what's going to happen. When you put on uh, fins and you kick really hard with your fins, your legs are going to output a lot more power. So overall, your speed will increase. So then what's going to happen is that's going to allow you to move your arms much faster during the water. Uh, in, you know, while you're during your pull phase, your arm will zip past you a lot faster. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to output a lot more power in order to make your stroke actually feel like it's doing anything. So this is a really good technique. This is a really good way to do some 25s and really crank up those arms. Okay. It's not going to really help you crank up the legs. That's actually the next part that we'll talk about. Um, but you want to really learn how to crank that arm speed up because uh, uh, true story. When I was in eighth grade, I went to a swim meet up in Barstow, California. I was entered in a hundred backstroke at about a one Oh eight. And I remembered I pushed off the 50. I saw two guys that were within about a half a body length of me after the 50. And I said, I'm not going to let those guys beat me. So I like, ah, you know, I just, I'm flailing my arms just like a, just like a, you know, like the Kermit the Frog. Ah! <laughs> I'm just like flailing my arms as fast as I could. I went from a 108 to a 104. I dropped four seconds out of nowhere. No extra training, no extra weights, no nothing. Just moving my darn, my darn arms faster. I dropped four seconds in a hundred in a hundred backstroke. I don't know where. So, and then I, I qualified for Junior Olympics. That was actually my first ever Junior Olympic cut. I went to Junior Olympics like three weeks later. I did it again, and I dropped another two seconds. No, actually, no. I went from I dropped six seconds the first time. I went from a one hundred eight to a one hundred two, and then I went from a one hundred two to a one double zero. So within a month. By simply moving my body faster, I literally dropped eight whole seconds on a hundred backstroke. I went from a 108 to a one one double O. Out of nowhere. So, rule number one of sprinting: just move everything a heck of a lot faster. Just do that first. <laughs> learn learn the punch. Learn the punch and the and the really snappy pullback but just make everything go faster, okay? Using fins will help you really up the tempo of your arm speed, and that will really, really, really make your arms go much faster. And if you use that same idea when you take the fins off, first thing, when you take the fins off, your, your leg's gonna feel like toothpicks, so beware of that. 
Um, you're going to want to do about 100 before you actually try any sprinting after you take fins off. Trust me, personal experience. Um, and then, um, so then you're going to want to uh, do 100. Hold on. My throat's killing me. Um, so you're, you, so when you, when you do the sprint, you know, really focus on those fast hands. Okay. Next legs, your legs must be moving. It, it, th this whole kick, 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 kick. Yeah. Yeah. That, not going to happen. Not going to work. Basically what I do with all high school sprinters is I have them up against the wall and I tell them, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you faster and you're going to kick faster. And we're just going to keep doing this until I tell you to stop. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they go, are you going to do what I think you're going to do? Yep. I'm doing exactly what you think I'm going to do. I'm going to make you kick faster than you've ever kicked. Those little leggy legs are going to go as fast as you can go. I'm going to make your leggy legs fall off. <laughs> so I do it and they're just like, oh my gosh, I was kicking so fast. I, that, was, that was amazing. I was like, okay, now. Go a 25 with those legs. And I and they go 25, and they're always like, I didn't know I could go that fast. Uh-huh. <laughs> so basically, what you want to do is you want to have a good friend. You need a good friend for this one. You need someone that's willing to just watch you suffer. <laughs> I guarantee you your legs are going to hurt. They are going to burn. So you want those, you just want those legs burned. Blasting. I don't really care about technique at this point. They just need to move fast. Obviously, the the straighter your legs can be, the less amount of a knee bend that you do, the kick is going to work better for you. But in terms of overall sprint theory, what you just want to do is just move the legs faster. Okay? You just got to move those legs faster. That's what you got to do. Um, so yes, so those are, those are the two major aspects of learning how to sprint. Okay. Move your arms faster, move your legs faster. Um, there's not really much else. Uh, like you can do the dry land punching. Um, like I was showing earlier, um, maybe, maybe the dry land kicking where you're on your stomach doing Superman kicks and try and move your legs as fast as you can. I kind of recommend you put something nice and soft under your legs just in case you get a little overzealous and just go bam right on the floor. It's not going to feel good on the knees. Yeah, no, avoid that, please. Um, Feral Swim Tech is not, uh, not responsible for you jacking your knee on the floor and uh, needing to go to the hospital because you shattered your kneecap. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I gotta cover. I gotta cover myself here. Okay. Also, uh, Zoot Sports is also not uh, responsible for any injuries done by uh, not behaving properly when doing. A <laughs> All right, I'm I'm joking here. I'm joking here. Um. So yeah. So basically, you just gotta practice with it. You gotta play with it. It is really something you kind of have to dial in and tune in, and uh, kind of figure out what works for you. Um, the way I recommend doing this is start by going just all out 25s, just going all out 25, take about 10 seconds rest, go another all out 25. And then you start going all out fifties and then an all out 75, then an all out hundred. Okay. Realistically sprinting ends at the hundred. Okay. 200 is a sprint for distance guys. You're still kind of doing the whole distance stroke, but you're just upping the leg tempo and you're upping just the overall speed of everything. But you're still basically doing the distance stroke, okay? So the 200 is technically a distance sprint, okay? Um, my buddies who were distant, pure distance swimmer, I was a backstroker and distance was my third event. So my buddies that were true distance swimmers, they would do the 200 way more often than I did. I saw the 200 maybe like once a season. Um, that was actually my high school event from sophomore year until senior year because the 500 was right before the backstroke and I was always too far dead after the 500 to really shine in the 100 backstroke, which was my better event. Um, so yeah, that's not... But yeah, that's back when I was running a uh, low, low uh, 42, 500 freestyle and a 5,300 backstroke. 
Um, in college, I wound up going a 436 500 freestyle and a 50.0 100 backstroke. Yeah, never broke that 50. But I did break the uh, 150 in the 200 backstroke. I was a 149 mid 200 backstroker. So I'm, I was very grateful that I was able to uh, do that. Uh, so, okay, so that's it for sprinting. Um, I'm going to now talk about TriDot Pool School. Okay, so if anyone is in chat and you got any other questions about sprinting, uh, hit me up in the chat. I'll answer those as I'm talking about try dot pool school. Um, so I have I was uh, approached by a coach from the try dot pool school, and I have accepted their offer to become a coach for the try dot pool school. So uh, basically, yours truly is going to be uh, on deck. Uh, well. I'm going to San Diego Pool School uh, in March uh, 18th, I believe, uh, 18th, 18th and 19th. Um, I'm going to be in San Diego, and I will be attending the pool school as a participant athlete swimmer. Um, then the next pool school that I do, um, I will be a assistant lane lead. And then, um, and then after that, I will be a lane lead. Um, so I'm very excited to be working with TriDot. Um, you know, they are a full partner with, uh, Team Zoot. Um, I know coaches, I know, uh, team captains have some, uh, have some, uh, free passes for the TriDot Pool School. Um, and, uh, Team Zoot members get $100 off. Uh, check your email for the discount code. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm super excited to be a part of the pool school. Um, I've gone through the, so what, the, what happens is you sign up for the pool school and then you get integrated into their, um, their online website and they've actually, they actually give you some homework that you have to do before the pool school. Um, the, and I, I'm very happy. I'm very happy with how they're teaching it. Basically what it does is it gives you a bunch of dry land drills to work on, before you get to the camp and what these dry land drills are are doing is they are drilling in very very good technique while you're on dry land which is basically the same way I coach you know it's the same way I do my swim technique review videos where I want to give you the opportunity to work on these techniques on dry land um now there's actually a couple of things that they do that I'm like holy crap that is like way better than how I teach it but I'm like I'm actually afraid to 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 use those techniques i'm like can i borrow these things because these things actually make a lot of sense <laughs> i mean some of them they're basically very similar to what i already teach so if they're kind of like hey you're kind of stealing our content I'm like no i've been i've been telling people this for five plus years <laughs> I have video evidence, okay? Okay. No, I, I'm not saying it's a problem. I'm just, I'm, I'm covering all my bases just in case it comes up, you know? Um, so I'm really excited to be a part of Tried Out Pool Schools. Um, this is a huge step for me as a stroke technique coach. Um, I'm trying to be more integrated on the Tried Out platform. So I, I, what I want to do is I want to be the swim guy. I want to be the guy that they're like, oh, oh, well, you know, I got this uh, got this guy who's really good on the uh, bike and run, but he's not that great in the swim. Hey, why don't you get that feral guy? Yeah, that feral guy knows what he's talking about. Yeah, sure. Why not the feral guy? <laughs> I want to be that guy. I want to be that feral. I'm the feral, but I want to be that feral. Okay. <laughs> um. So yeah. So um. So I'm I'm very excited to be a part of the pool school. Um. So I'm definitely planning on being at uh, San Diego. Um. I might go to Phoenix. Um. I actually might go to Bentonville. Um, I saw that they have one in Bentonville. My brother lives in Bentonville. So I might have to see if I can work the Bentonville one so I can actually go and visit my brother. And then I'll bring my wife and kids along so they all can uh, hang out in Arkansas with their cousins. You know, we've never been to Arkansas. You know, my brother's been living there for ages. And I'm just kind of like, oh, crap, I got to find a reason to go out and see him. Hey, I could work a swim camp and they all can, you know, go have some fun. Uh, so anyway... <laughs> Yeah, so uh, try it out pool school. Um, I really like what I'm seeing so far. Um, it's it's a little pricey, um, but the way that I see this is if you are very serious about getting better 
and you really want the hands-on experience, the hands-on treatment. Um, there's also some workshops and classes associated with it. So it's not just hopping in the pool with people like me. You're actually going into classes and talking about that stuff. I don't really know what all that entails just yet. Um, I will definitely do a full live stream, a full Feral Swim Tech live stream after the camp is over. I'm going to take lots of notes um, and we'll talk a lot about kind of what went on with the camp. Um, hey, you know what? Maybe Mark Goddard would let me on the Friday stream and I'll talk about it with him. Eh, eh, I don't know. So um, so anyway, I'm really excited to be uh, part with Tri partner with TriDot. Um, I'll give you more information as it develops. Um, but for now, um, so personally, um, it's kind of what's coming up in my life in terms of triathlon. Um, my first race is Pasadena Reverse Tri. Um, I am going to try to win the swim. I think I was second place last time I did it two years ago. Um, so I'm going to try and win that. And I'm also going to try and podium my age group. So that's that's my goal. I'm going to try and podium my age group. Um, then after that, um, I am going to attempt to go to uh, Boulder City in April. I think it's in April. Um, they have a, uh, they have a whole slew of, uh, triathlon events going on up there on a Saturday. Um, I, I might go up there for that. Um, but then basically March is going to be it for me, um, all the way until after I get back from Lake Powell. Uh, cause then there's some races that happen on Saturdays after that. Um, I only race on Saturdays, so I'm definitely going to be back in Mesa this year. Uh, definitely gonna defend my swim title. I won the swim last year, and I'm not taking no crap from nobody. I'm not gonna let anyone start in front of me this year. Dang it! I made that mistake last year, and I had to lap two fools like right off a flip turn because it, it it came because I was third. I I hopped in the water third, you know, because it was a hop in start. It was actually a pool swim to start. So they lined everyone up one at a time. You hop in and you and you start swimming. So. I, I made the mistake of going third and I caught up to the two guys because the guy in second caught up to the guy in first and then I caught up to both of them right at the same point at like the three, is I think it was a 50 meter pool. So I caught up to them at like the 150 mark and I just flipped turn on the outside. I went underneath and I just popped up ahead of them. I'm like, later fools. <laughs> and I won the swim. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I should have taken my buddy's advice, you know, cause, um, cause my college roommate that I also trained with at BYU, he lives in Mesa. So I was crashing at his place and he's like, dude, Farrell, just, just don't take any crap from nobody, man. Do not let them, do not let them start ahead of you. Just, just go in front, own it and do it. I should have listened to him, but I'm not going to make that mistake this year. So I'm going to be in Mesa somewhere around September. Um, definitely doing Bayshore Olympic. Um, I might, might do Malibu. I might do Malibu. I have to see if Malibu will fit into my schedule. Um, so, yep. So that's that's pretty much it for me this year. Um, I might try and do a time trial race uh, for biking. Um, I've seen that there's a 40k bike race that um, that these guys put on like like the first Saturday or Sunday of the month. I might try and do that once just to kind of see how that's like. Uh, so I'm kind of excited for that. So anyway, uh, that's actually going to be it for me. Uh, last call, last call, last call for uh, any any swimming related questions. Last call. Sorry about that. Um, so yeah, I always want to make sure I do a last call for any questions, just, just in case if there's anyone in chat. But uh, yep. So anyway, so that's going to be it for me tonight for Feral Swim Tech. Um, I'm going to take a small break, and then I'm actually going to move over to YouTube. Uh, YouTube and Twitch, um, where I do a live stream for video games. Um, it's basically a dumb hobby of mine. Me and a couple buddies were playing Mech Warrior 5 Mercenaries, so we're going to roam the galaxy and blow up big old space robots. It's actually a heck of a lot of fun. <laughs> Not going to lie, it's pretty swank. Um, so if you are, if you are curious, um, to learn more about Feral Swim Tech, please, uh, check out the Instagram, check out the YouTube account. Um, like I said, I just posted two swim technique reviews. Um, so check those out. If you want swim technique review, shoot me an email, feralswimtech at gmail.com. I'll tell you what I, what footage I need 
And um, if you want some examples, go check the Feral Swim Tech on YouTube. You'll be able to get any advice. Um, if you made it to this point of the film and you're watching it on the VOD, thank you so much for doing that. Um, if you have any questions whatsoever, leave comments. I check the comments. I respond to the comments. Um, I want to make sure that I help you get faster. It's something I love to do. I'm very blessed to be able to have the eye to see technique and understand how to help people get faster. Uh, so that's going to be it for me. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Thank you, Team Zoot, again, for letting me take over your Facebook space and do this. Um, so, yeah. So until next time, my friends, thank you all so much for tuning in. Keep training harder because here at Feral Swim Tech, we swim harder. We swim. Hold on. Frito. Frito. Edit all that out. Edit that out, okay? You see, I got I got a guy back there. His name is Frito. Um, he helps me with the live streams, and he makes sure I don't screw up, okay? If I ever screw up, I tell him to edit it out, and he edits everything out. He's absolutely fantastic. Everyone needs a Frito Bendito bot. So, okay, cuz. Okay, let's reset. Okay, Frito, we're good? Okay, we're good. Okay, so just remember, thank you all so much for tuning in. Keep training because here at Ferro Swim Tech, we swim smarter and harder because we're smarter. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please uh, check the uh, Team Zoot Facebook page. That's where I post um, when I will be going live next and what the topic is going to be. So come with your questions and or comments. And until later, my friends, good night, Isaiah Norris, wherever you are. I'm out of here. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye.